Welcome back guys. Today we are going to build a device that controls the heating for our pool. It's a little bit windy outside, so I'm actually going to go directly into the build itself. We need something that can turn on and off the heating system based on the temperature in the pool. What we have here is we have our water tank system in this end and of course a boiler that heats it up. And what my original home build heater system does it, it generally just senses the temperature in the house and then passes heat in the pipes over to the house. What I have done is I added a switch here that goes to a heat exchanger. This is my external system here. And of course we have the pool here. We have the cleaning system that is circulating the water into the pool. With that said, I have added on the, the, the cleaned side a small circulation pump that I can switch on and off. It basically takes the water that is filtered and instead of sending it to the pool, it sends it to the heat exchanger and back. So what we need to do today is to figure out how we can manage this automatically instead. Basically what I want to do in terms of the code is that if we have temperature that is above 37C we will close or shut off the pump and we will lower the temperature in my temperature system and the reason for that is because even though I close the pump I have some minor circulation in the system and if we have a temperature that is lower than 34 degrees I will start the pump and I will raise the temperature again. And as you can see here, I have a history in between. So the reason for that is because it takes time until actually the temperature starts falling again or starts rising again. So if we have them too close to each other, it won't work that great. If it is between, take a bath. So basically we have the gear here. The sun off is for me a natural thing to use. Uh, this one actually have built-in controller. It's wireless, it does MQTT that I have planned to use today. And this is basically the board itself. You can see two different versions. This is the POW, this is the TH16. And the difference between them is that this one measures the actual current that goes into the equipment that you hook it up. And this one is prepared for the temperature sensor. After looking at those two devices, I have decided that I will not go ahead and use the son of Pau in this video. The reason for that is that there is no isolation between the AC and the digital pins from the ESP8266 here. So that makes it a little bit more trickier to actually hook up sensors without knowing what you are doing. So in this video, I will skip this one. I don't need to measure the power. I will go and use this TH16. This one actually have the outlet already. With that said, I do not have that cable lying around. But I know that you have, for instance, that pin there is GPI of 14, 3.3 volt and ground. So I just need to hook up my DS18B20 between those three lines there. This one is already prepared without nothing added extra to be added because it have pull up and everything enabled here. The sensor itself is really really small. It's not much to talk about. It's a transistor size. Uh, so we're going to solder this to some sort of wire. They will be kept inside a box so that they don't get rained on later on because they will be outside.
It's now time for the serial adapter. Take a note of the RX, the TX, the ground and the VCC so you connect them up properly. Make sure that you have an adapter that can cope with 3.3V so you don't burn the zone off up with the 5V instead. So when you have hooked everything up, it's time to actually do the programming of this device. I have the serial interface here and the USB cable prepared. What you need to do when your program is that you will need to hold the button pressed while you insert the USB cable. So when you have downloaded everything and prepared the software and prepared the binary that you're going to uh, flash this Sonoff with, it's time to plug it in. So what I do is that I hold firmly in the adapter, press the button, insert the cable. Wait a couple of seconds, release the button. So now we should everything be set, so let's check out the program. And yes, I have no screen grabber present on this computer and I'm sorry for that. Hopefully my new computer will do this a little bit better. As you can see here, I have used this before. Uh, you need to choose the COM port. If it doesn't show up, press the update button and then go and choose the COM port. You need to choose the actual binary that you have downloaded. As you can see here, I'm using the Sonoff sensors. That's the one that is included the DS18B temperature sensor. The default values are generally OK, and don't forget erase flash, and then your new flash node MCU. If everything goes well, you will see that this is updating instantly and starting to flash the sun off. As you can see here now, it's now flashed, and you can now reboot the sun off. Doing that, it's just a matter of pulling out the plug and in again. So basically, pulling out the power and starting the Sonoff up again. Do not flash your Sonoff while it has mains power. Always disconnect all mains power when doing this. So it's now time to bring up your phone. You should know that you have a very limited amount of time you can do this. Go to the Sonoff. If it doesn't show up as a login, you go to 192.168.4.1. You can now configure it to go to the wireless network and I'm doing it right now and I'm adding the password and when that's done you go down and press save the device is now rebooting again it's a go to your favorite software like your router or whatever you have make sure you update and you locate all the devices on your wireless network doing that will rather quickly show you the new device if it is newly configured, it will show up as the son off and the number. In my case, it show off as pool and number, and that's because I changed a couple of settings. So ignore my name here. What is interesting is the IP itself. When you are logged into the device itself, it's time to configure it up. I start with the configured MQTT server that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use the, the topic should be pool. And I'm saving it. The device is now rebooting. Wait a couple of seconds. And then we will be able to get back into the graphical user interface. Configuration again. And I'm going to configure the module. Uh, I'm selecting TH because that's what I'm having. Saving again. Waiting. I'm going into configuration to cross check the module. So after you have changed the module type, you need to go in and change the sensor. So let's do that and save. So let's see if we go to console and you will see that the device is up and running. It has co connected to the MQTT server because it's sending MQTT messages. It also is connected to the temperature sensor and sending temperatures because if I push my finger on it, it will change over time. One thing that I do need to change now, because I do not want it to send updates every 5 minutes, I want it to do it often. It's called tele period, and I'm going to change that to 15 seconds. And you can see the result is ok. So it's now sending MQTT messages every 15 seconds instead. Let's go to node red to cross check that we are getting the messages. As you can see here, I have set up a simple probe. Let's change that to son off and I'm subscribing to every message on that one. 
done and I'm sending it to debug. Let's deploy that and let's wait. As you can see we already got the messages directly. For instance we have the pool sensor va value down here. So we actually have the temperatures here. So that's really really good. Let's package this up and put it out into the pool itself and the last step will be to actually configure the node red to turn on and off the pump when it's needed. So let's put this device back into the box again. For this to work I want this cable to go out somewhere around here. So I need to add a hole. You can see the cable goes out fine and you have that protection there. Before we continue we are going to fix this up a little bit better. This will be sitting against a pipe but I want some more heat shrink around it. Nice and neat like that. Yes there is some insulation between but that's not a problem because we are not talking about 100% accuracy. So I found a cord in my hidings that I will use for the input. Normal one square millimeter and it's good enough for this pump. It's important when you do this work that you understand what you are doing. We are talking about AC voltages here and high currents. It's lethal. Do not do this unless you are aware of what you're doing. So that's the first one. Now we need to do the output as well. And we need to find another cable. So I have now hooked everything up. I found an old wire here that I can use from an old extension cord that was broken. The wire goes in here, the temperature sensor is here. It's time to test it out. I have connected it to power. This one is connected to the oscilloscope here. So if I press the button, it turns on. As you can see, it turns the oscilloscope on. If I go to my computer and toggle it, it turns off again. So it's actually working as it should. So let's go out and mount this where it should be. And then we go back in and configure the data here from the temperature sensor to actually control the sun off. So let's take a look at the pumping station. Unfortunately, I have to do a voiceover here because the sound from the wind and from the pump itself drowned everything. So this is the pumping station itself, it's not the most tidiest, and in here you can see the pump and the sonoff that do the work to actually send the water to the heating station. And I just put the sonoff inside this cabinet for now, and it keeps it dry enough, uh, except for moistened air. Under the cloth here is the temperature sensor, uh, and it's tied against the pipe, and this pipe is where the filtered water comes from the pool itself. So it should not be a problem about the temperature and it will be able to sense the actual temperature. Uh, hopefully this will work out. Uh, I will be testing this for a couple of weeks now and if it is working as I want, I will be building a permanent solution instead. So let's take a look at the software and the configuration of this setup. First of all, as you can see here, we have the son of itself that I'm logged into, 192.168.25.150. This of course depends on your setup. From the menu, of course, I can toggle it on and off, and you can see the temperature sensor itself. If everything is configured properly, you can go to console, and you can see everything that is happening on the Sonoff. You can see the MQTT data being sent, and you can see the state itself to it. So let's go to Node Red and see the configuration. So what I have done here is I have created an input MQTT node that listens on the MQT topic TLS pole and sensor. I have then converted that data to JSON so I can actually work with it a little bit easier. I go to a special or custom made function. In this function itself I check the message, the temperature message, and I compare it to 37 degrees. If it is higher than that, I want the output to be off. If it is lower than 34, I want the output to be on. That data itself I then send to the CMND pool power. That is the command that is used in the Sonoff to set the power either on or off. So basically what I do, I take the temperature, 
do some uh, functions on it and then I send it back to the Sonoff and if it is on it goes on if it should be off it goes off I also take this value and if it is off I change the payload to zero and if it's on I change the payload to one this is just a stupid thing to do but I done it this way because it was easy I then send that to my MQTT back again to config heating and set this is actually the MQTT topic that my heating system is using so it basically what it does it it stops and starts the pump at the same time as it enables or disables my heating system the heating system itself if you push it to off it will disable any heat going to the circulation I also take the state JSON it do some functionality on it and send those data to the influx database and this is for me so I can be able to actually graph the data or actually show what the status is all this you see here and add it to the YouTube video itself to a link down below so if you want the code you can f get it if you want let's go to Grafana this is one of my dashboards I have I have many of them as you can see here I have the pool temperature itself, it's current at 37.1 degrees and the pool status is off. That means it will not circulate any water to the heating system that also is off. So basically I can show off the values that I get here. I think that concludes everything. Uh, the dashboard and everything you see here is actually based upon uh, the BMS part that I have done earlier. So you can get that dashboard via the solar Pi itself. If you have any questions regarding this setup, feel free to let me know. Um, if you wonder anything, ask down in the comments. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video.